We often think about the youth and young people around the world in conflict situations, forgetting those that live close to us and the challenges that they face. Hello everybody, my name is Michael Murphy. I'm from the African Center for Disaster Studies and the Eager Project Manager. This program that you're about to embark on is to help enable our children to be able to handle the challenges of the future. The Eager Project is to empower young girls and boys, more especially to deal with the hazards and the vulnerabilities that they face on a daily basis. The Eager Project is a product from a project that had already started in 2008 um, called the Goal Project. It stands for Girls in Risk Reduction Leadership and uh, it focused on young adolescent girls in uh, communities where they face different issues that might increase their disaster risk. Um, and the idea was that uh, through the Goal Project uh, you gain exposure for these girls. Um, and capacity building to actually deal with different things in their environment better and become a unit within their environment to um, assist the rest of the community and to kind of transfer that knowledge and skill to the rest of the community. Uh, the Eager Project started from the Girl Project. Um, the Girl Project was, I think, about say, seven, eight years ago. And it started in a small town um, in Bomberanstad, it's Makwasi. And it was only focused on empowering girls in um, vulnerable communities. And from that, they, it went over to the IAG project, which was the Integrating Adolescent Girls in Disaster Risk Reduction. So it was also focused on girls, but then it went international to places like Malawi and so on. And then it was the Eager Project and we, st we decided that why only girls? Boys are also vulnerable and that is where the whole project started. We have you know, seen what, uh, what we needed to do in terms of um, you know, getting other genders within the projects because uh, you know, social issues do not necessarily affect only girls now. You know, and um, we believe that the frequency of disasters are actually you know, increasing every day. So the more they increase, we can see that um, things like Eager Project can actually now try to focus, you know, on all aspects of life. What is this project going to do? It's about equipping and empowering young people with knowledge and capacity to answer and address some of the critical issues that they are facing. It's also about us learning about what do young people see? What do they see as the critical issues today? And what are they going to see as they go forward? You get a nurse to come speak about different health issues um, or sexual health issues. You get a f the fire station to actually bring the girls over and have this um, you know, uh, expose about what they do in the fire station and um, how they work. and. And so forth. The way we have set the program is that they identify their vulnerabilities, they identify the hazards within their residential areas, and then they go out and discuss them with the local facilitators. They discuss those issues. They also come up with local solutions of how to deal with those issues, with those vulnerabilities, with those hazards. The moment you include people that are part of the environment, um, it becomes a us thing and not a us to them thing. It becomes a shared goal and it becomes a shared idea toward working towards something together. It um, focuses on, on not necessarily their needs, but it's actually focusing on their resilience because it helps them to actually realize their own potential as communities. You know, through the issues that they face every day, uh, a project like Eager uh, actually, you know, assists them to actually overcome them. 
we are looking at vulnerabilities more especially in terms of cross-border issues that's one of the biggest issues that we looked at there might not be conflicts but these cross-border issues there are always issues between the communities across the border there is issue of prostitution you know truck drivers who passes by using local girls you know things like that so i think that's one of the main reason we have chosen these particular countries looking at these cross-border issues trying to address them where they are prevalent so all of these trucks now uh, will have to get on that ferry to cross the Zambezi and they will, they, some of these things, I mean they're carrying mining equipment, they're going up to the Congo, <coughs> other parts of Central Africa. These drivers will camp with their vehicle for five days at a time just to get on that ferry. in Namibia they don't have shops on that side of Namibia and they want to provide meals to the children after the sessions or before the sessions but it's not like the other countries where they could just say let's get a caterer for this um, they actually need to go into another country with a boat buy the food then go back through the border cross the river again and to their side again in Namibia and then make the food themselves. So I think that is really a challenge. Also the water, um, there's no basic access to water, they need to go to the river. Um, so I think that is the biggest challenges for this project. Communities that actually have different dynamics in Iga and for a mere fact that you come with one methodology end up actually implementing it differently. So our first train the trainer um, was held in Botswana and it included all the teachers from Botswana and Namibia. And I went um, up to Botswana and I gave them training in this manual. So I told them what is the manual all about and I assisted them to develop this sessions for their students. So that once they left from that the training that they could actually go out and impl start implementing this project immediately. Um, from that we went to Swaziland. Um, I met the teachers in Swaziland and we had the training sessions there as well. And Mozambique's training is now in progress as we speak now. The information and the, um, and the issues that's focused on should always come from areas that you're working in. Um, you can facilitate the entire process but it's really important to get those experts in that know the community that work in the community um, and that can also take on the responsibility of actually working with these young kids you know we are saying learners to be able to go back home to actually teach parents on certain things that parents had their own way of thinking. And, you know, learners who can be very vigilant enough to actually make necessary decisions regarding their careers. You know, learners who think out of the box, you know, and learners who, who are part of the community, meaning when they are part of the community, they will protect their own community. I frequently go to Swaziland. There is quite a lot of people who are happy with what we are doing. Their parents are happy. In, in fact, our first introductory meeting, even before we started with the project, we met with all the parents of the different schools and they were so happy that their kids were selected amongst the many kids to participate in the program. So they were so happy. When we visit there and when we interact with them, I don't even know what is the feeling. You know, they are so ecstatic. They are seeing the difference in the kids. This project is from the start set up in a way to kind of make sure that when we drop out in the, pro in, in the activities that there are local connections that have been made, local relationships that have been built um, through kind of um, the eager project and um, 
and that can actually form a structural framework for the project to be um, sustainable and to carry on when we're not there anymore leaving them behind we don't come with our own agenda you know and I think that's that's the basics of working with communities that's the basics of these community disaster risk management approaches you know when you work with communities I mean you don't come and impose you listen to what they have to say you blend with the knowledge that you have you know to create the solution to the problems that they are facing look in whatever instance that we do as Botswana's our tribe, our tribe needs to be protected by us, you know. So, Higa, Higa can be a tribe, you know, in Botswana, in all the countries, you know, everyone can actually see Higa as, you know, as, as part of their tribe. Um, we always focus on relief operations. You get a lot of projects there that comes in after the risks and hazards and just provide relief and then they just go. Um, what I want the Eager Project to do is actually they must see that this is a way of living. Uh, we want this to expand, we want this to just go to other countries, even if there's now 10 boys and girls identified in a country, even if they, they can just be a leader for five different girls and boys, then we have already achieved, I think, a lot. Once the eager actually um, has been completed in each country, the idea is you know, to have eager continuing. What they're going to do, the outcomes, nobody knows. But one thing that we know, is eager is running.